Oh, hi. Hello there. Welcome. Welcome to the Story Emporium Repair Shop. We're not repairing anything today. We are making scarves. We're making scarves for Cecil. He's wearing one of those we've made, and it's a beautiful little number for a little Cecil around town, I think. Look at the scarves we've got. We've got a nice paisley scarf. This is for if he ever goes to Paris. Paris. Uh, we've got a nice scarf for the wintertime as well. Now, making the scarves with me is poor May. And poor May. She has been very, very, very good and wise in telling us what scarves suit Cecil. Thank you, poor May. All of the people in the Story Emporium repair shop help each other. And when we help each other, Dennis, Vernon, Femi, Obstreperous, all of them, when we help each other, we all get happier. But I'm going to tell you a story today about people who didn't help each other, who didn't help each other to make everything good. Right, um, Cecil, story time. The bell, please. Thank you very, very much. Now then. Story's coming down. Ah, there it is. Cecil, the story is in the room. Ah. Once upon a time, there was a town, and the town was in Germany. And it was a beautiful town. It had a river running through it, and the river was sweet, fresh water. And across the river was a beautiful wooden bridge. It was very, very old. The people in the town were quite well off because they made things, things like iron things and wooden things, and people came from miles around to buy these things. But just because the town was well off doesn't really mean the town was good and generous. Well, it started one morning. The blacksmith was in his shop, and he was bending some metal. He was hitting the metal, bending it when he looked up, and he saw a rat. A rat was sitting on the anvil over the other side of the shop. The blacksmith looked, and the blacksmith said, Gear off my anvil, rat! The rat didn't move. So the blacksmith got his massive mallet and threw it at the rat. The mallet paraboled through the air and the rat just looked at it coming and just bent to the side. <laughs> the, the mallet went past the rat and the rat just looked at the blacksmith. Cheeky rat, brave rat. Well, the second incident happened in the old windmill. The miller came down and he said, well, I should have lots of flour left to bake some bread this morning. And he opened the flour barrel and he said, well, hold on, where's all the flour gone? And as he looked deeper into the barrel, there at the bottom of the barrel were three fat rats. <laughs> But that wasn't the worst thing. In school that day, the teacher was asking all of the children to do a little bit of art. They were all at their tables doing art when suddenly one of the boys screamed quickly. Every child grabbed hold of each other and they looked around. Some of them sit still sitting down felt the, oh, the whole classroom moving. The classroom began to move with rats, rats all over the place, in and out, chewing the rubbers, chewing the books, in and out of the sink. The children screamed. The teacher said, line up, line up. Never mind lining up, run. And they ran out of the classroom. The classroom was full of rats. But even that wasn't the worst thing. 
The mum had just put her little baby to sleep upstairs, and she went downstairs to read her book, and as she was reading the book, she heard the baby crying, and she thought, oh dear, I'd better go up and get him back to sleep again. But when she went up the stairs and turned on the light, click, she looked at the cot, and the cot was full of rats. Get out of my baby's cot, she screamed, and she shook the cot. The rats left. But they left after chewing off four of the baby's fingers. Well, all of the people, they'd had enough of the rats. And they said, we've got to get rid of these rats. And they assembled in the town square. And they looked up at the town hall. And they said, Mayor, Mayor, we've got to get rid of the rats. We've got to get rid of the rats. Now, the mayor was inside the town hall. He was counting out his money. Oh, loads of gold here. And loads of... What's that noise? What's that noise? Sounds like a thunderstorm. I'll have a look outside. And when he looked outside, he saw all the people assembled in the square, chanting, You've got to get rid of the rats! You've got to get rid of the rats! And then the mayor said, Hold on a minute, hold on, I'll be down. He came downstairs, he came out to the square, and he said, Look, 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 if you want to get rid of the rats, that's going to cost you money. And you know what we're like? We don't like spending money. We like our freedom. Freedom to keep all our money. But, Mayor, look at my little baby. They chewed off four of his fingers. And the teachers were saying, what about the school? And the miller and the blacksmith. But then it was a boy, a little boy. The little boy started shouting, look, look who's coming. Look who's coming. And he pointed. And coming down the lane was a very peculiar man. He was pied. And what that means is he was dressed in black and white. On his jacket, this half was black, this half was white. And on his trousers, this half was black, and that half was white. He was carrying a pipe, a flute. And he walked in with his feathered hat, and he bowed to the mayor, and he said, My dear mayor, I can get rid of the rats. Oh, really? You can get rid of the rats? That's great. And how much is it going to cost? Well, it's going to cost six pieces of gold and six pieces of silver. What? said the mayor. Six pieces of gold? Six pieces of silver? Just to get rid of the rats? Get out, get out, get out. My dear friends, don't listen to this man. I can get rid of the rats. I can get rid of the rats for one piece of gold and one piece of silver. Because I am going to Berlin. And I am going to fill my wagon with Berlin cats. Now, Cecil, Berlin cats are the worst Cats in the world, they're the most vicious, they're the most streetwise. They are very definitely bad. Well, that afternoon, the mayor got on his cart and he was waved off by the town. Over the wooden bridge, off he went to Berlin to get the Berlin cats. The next day, in the morning, he came back. The people crowded in the square. And the mayor got off his horse, and he looked at the cart, which was covered with a tarpaulin. And he said, right, don't go anywhere near the cart. It's full of Berlin cats. Have a look at that. He ripped off the tarpaulin, and there was a cage. And in that cage were 50 Berlin cats, the most vicious cats ever. One had a scar that came down here and zigzagged across his face. He hung on to the bars and he said, See me, yeah, I can beat up a dog. And the cat next to him said, said That's nothing. I can eat a dog. Right, everyone, said the mayor. Everyone, go back to your houses. Lock your doors. Lock your windows. Don't look out because I'm going to release the cats and they're going to get rid of them rats. So everyone cleared the, uh, the square and the mayor went over 
unlocked the cage and turned and he ran. He ran back to the town hall, dived in the window and closed the window. While those cats, they dived out of the cage and they ran through the town. They were looking for the rats. They went down the drains, up the guttering, behind the walls, onto the roofs, into the drains and the roofs, round everywhere in the town, under, up, inside, outside, looking for the rats. Well, the whole town began to shake. Dust fell down from ceilings. Parents grabbed their children and held them tight as they witnessed and heard the battle of the rats and the cats. It lasted six hours. And by the end of that day, as the sun was going down, silence reigned. And people began to unlock their doors and come out into the squares. They were smiling. They've got rid of the rats. The cats have got rid of the rats. We can't hear any squeaking anymore. It's fantastic. The mayor gathered there and said, see, see, very cheap price, very cheap price. But then, right at the back, the saloon doors of the dog and Adolf opened. <laughs> and out came a rat, a big one. And he was dragging a dead Berlin cat by the tail. And he lifted up the cat and he swung the cat around and threw it. And it landed in the dust at the feet of the crowd. And then the rat said, You'll never get rid of the rats. You'll never get rid of the rats. He turned. He went back into the saloon. <coughs> and the people looked at each other. And they held the, their children tight. And they wondered what would happen next. Well... If you want to know what happens next, stay on, because episode two is coming up.